How to weaken a narcissist so that they submit to you forever? Are you grappling with the daunting challenge of disentangling yourself from the toxic clutches of a narcissist? Despite your earnest endeavours, do you find yourself repeatedly ensnared in their intricate web? Maintaining steadfastness and implementing the no-contact rule can prove to be immensely arduous, particularly when face-to-face -face encounters remain a looming possibility. Seizing control of our own healing and recovery necessitates severing the narcissist's access to their emotional fodder. Yet, maneuvering through shared spaces with a narcissist, whether it be the workplace, social gatherings, or co-parenting arrangements, can significantly impact our mental well-being. The pivotal inquiry arises. How can we starve them of the sustenance they crave? How do we dismantle their reliance on us as their emotional crutch? In this presentation, we will explore the myriad interactions and communication channels that serve as rich sources of narcissistic supply, as well as those that offer them minimal reinforcement. Your mental well-being warrants attention, and I am here to assist you in navigating these scenarios with minimal stress. Before delving into the captivating domain of narcissistic psychology, I wish to extend my heartfelt gratitude for joining me on this enlightening journey. As a supplementary resource, I am pleased to offer a complimentary course on narcissism and effective strategies for coping with narcissists. Please refer to the description box below if you wish to avail yourself of it. Prepare yourself for today's mission, which centers on a bitter truth we must confront, how to diminish the very sustenance that empowers narcissists. This insight is not only essential for addressing present challenges, but also for healing from past hurts. After all, escaping the clutches of old traumas isn't always feasible. Let's be honest, encountering a former narcissist feels like stepping onto a battlefield unarmed. Caught unprepared, we must limit the supply they can draw from us. So, buckle up and join me on this journey toward emotional liberation. For narcissists, nothing rivals the exhilarating high of being in your presence, stirring up chaos within your mind. And if they can't be there physically, a mere video call will suffice. These cunning beings thrive on face-to-face -face interactions. It's their arena, and they are the masters of manipulation. They lure you into reacting, draining your emotional energy like relentless parasites. Even the smallest drop of fuel satiates their unquenchable thirst. It's no wonder these zealots will stop at nothing to be wherever you are, infiltrating your workplace, gym, grocery store, and even attempting to win over your friends and family. They excel in manipulation and understand that while you may ignore their calls, texts, and emails, face-to-face -face encounters are where they shine. They'll employ charm to resurrect fond memories, make you laugh, and manipulate you into submission. Conversely, they are adept at pushing your buttons, deliberately provoking explosive reactions to feed on your emotional turmoil. So, if you're trapped in their maze of falsehoods and trickery, the golden rule is to steer clear of them like the plague. But let's be real. Sometimes, due to shared responsibilities or collaborative projects, you might find yourself stuck with them. Fear not, my comrades, for I present to you these indispensable nuggets of wisdom. First and foremost, wield the ultimate weapon in your arsenal, Limit interaction with these twisted beings. Refuse to be swayed by their magnetic charm. Instead, keep conversations shallow and devoid of any personal involvement. We're talking about frosty, robotic exchanges here, folks. Unless it's strictly business-related, don't get ensnared in their schemes. Resist the urge to rekindle old connections or reminisce about the past. Here's the kicker. Remain composed, unruffled. Don't let them get under your skin. Once the conversation naturally concludes, feel free to make your exit without hesitation. Now, on to tip number two, folks. 
buckle up, because this is expert-level guidance. Embrace the art of emotional detachment. Yes, you heard me right. Channel your inner stoic, akin to the legendary Spock. Show no sign of sadness, anger, fear, or any emotional vulnerability. Why, you ask? Because they thrive on your reactions like insidious parasites. They're banking on extracting emotional fuel from your responses. They might even try to exploit your courtesy against you. But fret not, for we got your back. Even if they try to push your buttons, resist the temptation to take the bait. Refrain from stooping to their level by hurling verbal assaults. Doing so will only escalate matters. Remember, any emotional outburst only confirms to them that they still wield power over you. Find your inner peace, remain calm, composed and unruffled. Don't emit even a whiff of your emotional energy. By employing these tactics, you can navigate the perilous waters and mitigate their impact on your mental well-being. Stand tall, my comrades, and keep your emotional emissions invisible to these cunning manipulators. Now let's move on to tip number three. Brace yourselves, for this knowledge is pure gold. Listen up, dear comrades, for this guidance is worth its weight in gold. Refrain from the temptation to seek explanations or closure from these individuals who resemble the walking dead. Trust me, it's simply not worth the effort. Narcissists are incapable of providing closure, it's their chills heal. And if you dare to engage in a dialogue with them, they'll detect your vulnerability like a pack of cunning wolves, exploiting it to their advantage. That's the last thing you need, isn't it? So, my friends, heed this counsel. Distance yourself from their presence. Find a reason to excuse yourself. Conjure up a plausible excuse if necessary. Let your creativity flow. Whatever it takes, minimize physical contact to the greatest extent possible. We're talking about ninja-level skills here, folks, and there's no room for error. Now, brace yourselves for a perplexing question as we unveil tip number four. What mode of communication offers the least narcissistic supply? I must confess, it's not a straightforward answer, but after meticulous consideration, we've arrived at a conclusion. If you must engage with these draining individuals, opt for written communication. Yes, you heard that correctly. Not only does this provide the least amount of fuel for these despicable narcissists, but it also grants you the opportunity to craft your message thoughtfully, free from the sway of your emotions. Talk about a win-win scenario. In conclusion, we realize that completely severing ties with these energy-draining vampires may not always be within our grasp. Life throws us curveballs, doesn't it? Hence, it's paramount to learn how to handle them while reducing their ability to drain us of our vitality. Here's a handy tip. Treating them with utter indifference, as if they're mere ghosts, will sting them like salt on an open wound. Believe me, they'll scuttle back to their dark corners like the desperate, slimy creatures they truly are. Now let's delve into a scenario that might feel like an inescapable nightmare. Picture yourself trapped in a world where contact with these narcissistic beings is inevitable. I know, it's downright chilling. So, if cutting ties or ignoring them isn't a feasible option, concentrate on minimizing your exposure to them as if it were your primary occupation. Embrace the art of the grey rock method, avoiding them as if they're carriers of a highly contagious ailment. Do whatever it takes to keep your interactions with them to an absolute minimum. We've come to the end of today's eye-opening guidance. I trust you found it truly enlightening. Remember to drop a comment below and share your insights. Thank you for tuning in. And until we meet again, let the journey of healing begin. Welcome back to another intriguing episode. Narcissists have a knack for avoiding questions. It's part of their routine, and they typically respond negatively, 
feeling entitled to keep their inner thoughts private. Delving into their inner world feels like unearthing buried emotions they'd rather keep concealed. Today, we're delving into specific inquiries that consistently prompt narcissists to dodge, deflect, or engage in mind games, seven in total. Exciting, isn't it? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to catch our upcoming episodes. But before we delve into the questions, here's a little something for you. Have you ever posed a question that made a narcissist squirm? Share your experiences in the comments. We're all in this together. Now let's dive into the first question. 1. Why do you act so friendly towards people you barely know? Are you trying to hide your true self when meeting new acquaintances? While many see networking as an opportunity to be amiable, narcissists view it as a chance to manipulate. They aim to garner support by portraying themselves as someone they're not, all to earn respect, admiration and attention. Narcissists weave elaborate tales to evoke specific emotions, showcasing their superficiality. New acquaintances may find them charming, but it's all a facade. Have you observed someone close engaging in this behavior? Share your anecdotes in the comments. Now let's move on to question number two. Here's the next question for exploration. Two. Why do narcissists become uneasy when faced with opinions, preferences, or thoughts that differ from their own? Their discomfort primarily stems from their need for control. Anything conflicting with their established worldview is perceived as a significant threat. They interpret divergent opinions as challenges to their authority, triggering feelings of unease. Narcissists crave agreement, validation, and obedience from others. Asserting your individuality is akin to breaking their established rules and defying their dominance, which they perceive as betrayal. Their perspective remains self-centered. They expect everyone to conform to their desires. When confronted with differing viewpoints, they perceive it as unjust and resist it vehemently. Resistance to their influence instills a sense of losing control prompting them to seek ways to alter or erase your uniqueness. Now let's proceed to the third question. Let's move on to the next question. 3. Have you ever delved into their inner struggles and pains? Posing this question to a narcissist often results in a puzzled expression. They steadfastly maintain they've never encountered significant traumas or endured profound emotional wounds. Wrapped in an aura of self-importance, they dismiss the notion that past events could have left a lasting impact on them. Even if they acknowledge past adversities, they adamantly assert that these incidents failed to affect them in any meaningful way. Probing their behavior in light of these experiences often triggers accusations of scrutiny and judgment. Sadly, they remain oblivious to the fact that their present harmful conduct is often rooted in their past mistreatment. Refusing to acknowledge the influence of their history on their current behavior, they steadfastly evade accountability. Now let's proceed to question number four. Four. Why do narcissists struggle to acknowledge their imperfections? Instead of owning up to their flaws, narcissists consistently deflect blame onto others. Their reluctance to admit any wrongdoing stems from a fortress of defensiveness they've meticulously constructed. To them, acknowledging their mistakes would equate to conceding they are no different from ordinary individuals, a notion they vehemently reject. They cling to the delusion of their own perfection and invincibility, positioning themselves as quasi-divine entities immune to error. Yet, as we all know, no one is exempt from making mistakes. Now let's delve into question five. Let's venture into the next inquiry. Five. Have they ever contemplated the need for personal growth or transformation? If you dare to pose this question, brace yourself for a tumultuous encounter. 
Their reaction will likely mirror a vehement defense against an assault on their very essence. Admitting the necessity for change implies inherent flaws and a relinquishment of absolute control, concepts they simply cannot abide. Mere suggestion of their potential for growth evokes feelings of shame and elicits a fervent defense of their perceived infallibility. To them, the notion of change signifies vulnerability, posing a direct threat to the fortress of egotism they meticulously constructed. They adamantly refuse to entertain the idea that change might be necessary, demanding unwavering obedience, curtailing dialogue, forbidding further inquiries, and insisting on subjugation to their desires. It's confounding how they overlook the universal imperative for personal evolution and development, particularly in nurturing healthy relationships. Yet, their veneration of their idealized self-image eclipses any recognition of the value of individual progress. Now let's embark on our next exploration. 6. Do you genuinely believe your perspectives reign supreme over everyone else's? It's a perplexing reality that some individuals grapple with even the simplest of decisions, from choosing a vacation spot to navigating political ideologies. They harbour opinions on every matter under the sun, staunchly convinced that their stance is not just valid, but unequivocally superior. What irks me most is their steadfast refusal to entertain alternative viewpoints. They wield their own perspective as the ultimate truth, dismissing all others with an air of disdain. This behaviour stems from a deep-seated belief in their own superiority, as if their thoughts are inherently more valuable than those of others. They exhibit a profound reluctance to acknowledge differing opinions, viewing such considerations as beneath them, and potentially threatening to their inflated sense of self-worth. It's exasperating to witness their blatant disregard for the importance of respecting diverse perspectives. Their aversion to doing so is rooted in the fear that acknowledging alternative viewpoints might diminish their own perceived importance. Now let's proceed to our next compelling question. 7. Why do those who harbour disdain for you persist in returning? Don't anticipate candid revelations from them. They won't readily admit that they crave attention, a lifeline they simply can't forsake. Instead, they'll contort reality deflecting blame onto you. They might assert, I return out of pity for you, or I hate witnessing your sorrow, hence I remain by your side. Yet the truth remains veiled. They derive satisfaction from witnessing your anguish, reveling in the control and significance it affords them. They'll castigate you for purportedly anchoring them to the past, yet in truth, they're the ones ensnared by the allure of your attention. They yearn for it as desperately as they do for air. Such individuals recoil from introspective queries, thwarting any prospects of authentic discourse or connection. If you encounter someone of this ilk in your life, remember, you cannot reform them. Instead, prioritize your own healing, fortify your boundaries, and safeguard your emotional well-being. It's a formidable task, but an indispensable one. Should you find these insights beneficial, share your reflections in the comments. Subscribe for further elucidation on navigating through tumultuous relationships. Until then, devote yourself to your personal growth and recuperation. Hey there, welcome back to the Narcissist Exposed channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that often flies under the radar, but holds significant importance in understanding the psyche of narcissists. Ever pondered what goes down when you refuse to dance to the tune of a narcissist who's given you the boot? Join me as we explore the tumultuous storm of rage and wounded pride that brews within a narcissist when they're denied the attention and adulation they crave. Despite discarding you and belittling your value, narcissists still expect you to grovel for their approval. But what unfolds when you choose to break free from their manipulation and opt for silence instead? 
This conversation promises to peel back the layers, revealing just how heavily narcissists rely on external validation and the seismic emotional shockwave that engulfs them when their expectations are shattered. Trust me, this journey into the heart of selfish behaviour is not one to be missed. Before we kick things off, go ahead and smash that like button below and share this discussion with anyone who might benefit from it. And if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button to catch more content like this in the future. Together, let's unravel the enigma, empowering ourselves along the way. Now, let's dive right in. Narcissists are notorious for discarding people like used tissues, always calling the shots. They meticulously monitor their supply, their term for the individuals they manipulate and exploit. They orchestrate their relationships to ensure they're never the ones left in the dust until they're ready to move on. But when they ultimately decide to cast you aside, they believe it's their prerogative and consider the matter settled. However, that's just the beginning of the story. Picture this. In the twisted realm of a narcissist's mind, there are a couple of key beliefs they cling to like life rafts in a stormy sea. Firstly, they revel in the notion that you're utterly dependent on them, unable to navigate life's waters without their guiding hand. It strokes their ego, elevating them to a pedestal of perceived superiority. Secondly, they crave the spectacle of your desperate pursuit, relishing in the validation it provides, like a monarch basking in adulation from their subjects. They've meticulously crafted a script where you're cast as the pursuer, feeding their insatiable hunger for significance while subtly eroding your own sense of worth. Now, here's where it gets bizarrely intriguing. The mere thought of you defying their script sends shockwaves through their fragile ego. They're oddly reliant on your negative emotions to prop up their own sense of self-worth. Yet, if you refuse to play your assigned role, their facade crumbles, leaving them hollow and vulnerable. They find themselves adrift, stripped of the power they once wielded over you. Unable to reconcile this loss, they lash out, casting you as the villain in their self-constructed narrative, accusing you of intentionally inflicting pain by withholding the validation they so desperately crave. But wait, it gets even stranger. Amidst all their deceit and manipulation, they somehow manage to twist reality, painting themselves as the aggrieved party. Despite their litany of transgressions, lying, cheating, demeaning you, and ultimately discarding you, they play the victim, aggrieved by your failure to endure their mistreatment or sacrifice everything for their cause as you once did. Navigating the labyrinthine depths of a narcissist's psyche can feel like traversing uncharted territory. But armed with the knowledge that they're driven solely by self-interest, we gain a clearer understanding of their actions and motivations. It's a peculiar dance with darkness, but understanding the steps can help us navigate the shadows more adeptly. When you defy the expectations of nasty individuals, be prepared for a storm of indignation to rain down upon you. They'll cast blame like a net, ensnaring you in a web of their own making, conveniently forgetting the havoc they wreaked upon your life. Suddenly, they're the aggrieved party, basking in the glow of victimhood, while you're left to weather the emotional fallout. For them, accountability is an alien concept, a foreign land they dare not venture into. Apologies are a luxury they refuse to afford, and the notion of rectifying their wrongs is but a fleeting thought. Instead, they pass the buck, assigning fault to anyone but themselves, unwilling to acknowledge the wreckage they'd left in their wake. In the eyes of a narcissist, reconciliation is merely a facade, a guise to cloak their simmering rage. Their emotions careen like a runaway train, oscillating between seething anger and calculated manipulation. They may entertain thoughts of reconciliation, but beneath the surface lurks a desire for retribution, a longing to settle a score. 
Their minds are a whirlwind of chaos, fixating on you one moment, only to seek solace in the arms of another the next. It's a perpetual cycle of turmoil, driven by a relentless pursuit of control. Whether they attempt to hoover you back into their orbit, or seek solace in the arms of another, their inner turmoil persists, an ever-present reminder of their own inadequacies. So, do narcissists fly off the handle? Absolutely. When they don't receive the desired reaction from you, their fury ignites. Your lack of distress is perceived as a personal affront, a direct assault on their inflated sense of entitlement. All of this stems from their delusional belief that their happiness takes precedence, even if it means causing others pain. It's crucial to grasp the intricacies of narcissistic behavior when navigating interactions with them. Their pretense of harmony serves as a guise to maintain dominance and exploit you further. Their cycle of rage, retribution and denial underscores the depths of their toxicity. They derive perverse satisfaction from inflicting suffering upon others to assuage their own insecurities, a practice steeped in injustice. Armed with this understanding, you can navigate dealings with narcissists more effectively, shielding yourself from the fallout of their malevolent actions. Dealing with narcissists is undoubtedly challenging, but unraveling the motivations behind their behavior can offer a modicum of clarity and self-preservation. Before you depart, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to our incredible viewers who make our endeavors possible. If you appreciate our content and wish to support us, consider contributing as little as one dollar on our Ko-Fi page. Every donation, no matter how modest, contributes to the enhancement and sustenance of our work's quality. As a token of our immense appreciation, your name will be prominently displayed at the outset of our videos as a special acknowledgement of your membership. Your pivotal role in our community is deeply cherished, and your backing empowers us to continue creating the content you cherish. Embark on this journey with us by clicking the Ko-Fi link provided in the following sentence. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for an abundance of insightful content. Spread the word to those who might benefit from it. Additionally, click the link in the description to access a complimentary book on navigating narcissistic relationships and explore our one-on-one -on -one sessions. With your invaluable assistance, we can furnish our viewers with indispensable tools and insights. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, when confronting narcissists, knowledge is your greatest asset. How to weaken a narcissist so that they submit to you forever? Are you grappling with the daunting challenge of disentangling yourself from the toxic clutches of a narcissist? Despite your earnest endeavors, do you find yourself repeatedly ensnared in their intricate web? Maintaining steadfastness and implementing the no-contact rule can prove to be immensely arduous, particularly when face-to-face -face encounters.